Businesses generate profit that help our economies, employ us, and address consumer needs. Many of these large profit-driven companies are run by people who have a business education. But here's a crazy thought. What happens if we use business solutions to create better societies? If we pivot away from being solely focused on profit and use a business education to bring about social change? To explore that thought, let me take you back, all the way back to when I was 13. We weren't in the safest of communities, but where we were was a place full of potential. I still remember the first time I decided to explore the community center, which my family and I drove by almost daily. It seemed like this building had it all. A pool, a rec room, a basketball court, you name it, everything. And the people. I was from a small town with very little diversity. And this rec center in a new city looked like the United Nations with people from all walks of life and backgrounds gathering under one roof. Before I knew it, I was involved in a basketball game on the outdoor court with my new friends. There we were, dribbling around broken glass and debris. When an older gentleman approached us in a flashy Cadillac, and it was a rather nice Cadillac, and he was trying to convince us to sell stolen goods for him. My new friends and I, we immediately ran inside to inform an adult. One of the basketball coaches made a sarcastic, kind of funny remark about how many people in this neighborhood never went to business school, but they sure knew how to find ways to use business for bad things. That stuck with me. Inside the rec complex, I see kids sprinting upstairs. <laughs> Where are they going? I asked my friends. To the rec room, of course. They yelled and they sprinted off. <laughs> Little did I know, I would be coming back to that rec room every day. We would do our homework together, play together, organize community events together. We even made a haunted house together. We were volunteering, but we didn't even know it. We were just having fun. Business lesson number one. Networking isn't just something boring adults do. But you do it every day. The people you choose to surround yourself with, hang out with, are your network. And luckily for me, I chose to surround myself with people who are passionate about doing well in school, sports, and volunteering. One of the adults at the rec center working there became our mentor, who we, le who we like to call our Yoda, <laughs> you know, from Star Wars. He always had such great ideas and advice on how to make our community better. And one day he pulled my best friend and I aside and said, here's a challenge for you. Pull your friends together and create change in this community. We had no idea what that would look like. But we said yes. He had the experience and we had oodles of energy. Unexpectedly, he became the mentor who changed a lot of our lives. His challenge started with, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future. <laughs> My heart still skips a beat thinking about what might have happened if any one of my five closest friends had chosen to jump in that flashy Cadillac. You know, the flashy Cadillac we spoke about earlier. <sighs> Excited to start the challenge, though. My best friend and I, we rounded up eight of our closest friends who also loved volunteering. They all bought in, and together we created the Bayshore Youth Council. Before we knew it, we were organizing park cleanups, hosting homework clubs, starting uh, basketball tournaments, and organizing ski trips. 
we also realized that we need funding to make this all possible. We reached out to our Yoda, you know, our mentor, booked the community center boardroom, and slammed our vision document down on the desk. Yoda's eyes lit up as though we mastered the force. <laughs> we told our Yoda to take him up on his challenge. We'd need some cold, hard cash. And overnight, we had a $5,000 operating budget. Now, that's a big operating budget for some 13-year-olds. <laughs> Our first venture was a ski trip. I knew the Bayshore Youth Council was onto something when a little nine-year-old girl <laughs> began tugging on my winter jacket. A huge grin on her face, <laughs> she yelled. This would have never happened to me if you all hadn't done what you did. Simple words, yet impactful. None of this would have been possible if our team hadn't been powered by our Yoda's or our mentor's wisdom. Business lesson number two. The power of a team. Our team greatly benefited by our diversity. We all brought forward a variety of thoughts and experiences that allowed for many innovative ideas to blossom. We identified key roles and played to people's strengths, whether it be marketing, operations, public speaking, and so on. And most of all, we benefited from the wise advice of our memorable mentor. When I closed the chapter on high school and went off to university, I made sure to take these lessons with me. And in my backpack, I naturally had my class textbooks, but I also would carry all the experience we gained. I found myself working for a local charity called the Boys and Girls Club. It was Halloween, and all the kids were discussing what costume they'd wear. One of the children pulled me aside and told me that they were sad because their family couldn't get them a Halloween costume. Now that struck a chord with me, and I took it as a challenge to solve. Once again, I pulled my best friend aside and said, we must do something. This child can't be the only one without a costume. We remembered what our business uh, prof told us. Business leaders meet consumer needs. So as community leaders, why don't we meet our community's needs? So many lessons I learned from the Bayshore Youth Council were ones that would be naturally applicable with the, these, this new venture. And perhaps this was the way we were seeking to grow our impact from our neighborhood to the whole city. We knew how to start. Round up our friends, seek mentorship, find funding. But what do we need next? Hmm. Eureka. <laughs> Classic business school advice. Identify needs and partnerships. We were determined that every kid should get to enjoy a Halloween costume, toys, and new clothes. We picked up the phone and cold called, sent messages on LinkedIn, all to community leaders across the city. And the craziest thing happened. Everyone wanted to help a good cause. Business lesson number three. Reach out and make those cold calls. Organizations want to help you. It is about creating an ecosystem of shared values. Before we knew it, we partnered with several community organizations and leaders to provide us funding. A multinational company to do toy drives at their stores. Schools to source us Halloween costumes from families. Local charities would send us thousands of clothes by the truckloads. Moreover, we pulled all of this together to create a first-class boutique pop-up free shopping experience across the city. <laughs> Born was a new organization called the Dreamcatchers. Thousands of people 
visited and expressed interest in our pop-up shops. It was beautiful seeing our trained volunteers giving personalized, extravagant, free shopping experiences to our guests. Just imagine your <laughs> very own personal shopper at your service. After a few years of operating, we found ourselves in fourth year university. The more business courses I took, the more it became evident that so many of the tools we used in creating the Bayshore Youth Council and the Dreamcatchers were based on business principles. With Dreamcatchers running well and the lessons learned with even more business training, I realized we could take our impact to the whole province and beyond. The golden question was, but exactly how? We now know how to seek mentorship, network, get funding, identify needs, and gain partnerships. What's next? What is next? I found the answers in the marketing course and the strategy course I was taking. Are you starting to see the pattern? Every new step was fueled by what we were learning. The marketing course made me realize we need to rebrand so we could reach thousands of people and inspire others to spark change. We need to rebrand. So we rebranded to the youth heroes and re-implemented everything we learned. We increased our marketing efforts and utilized social media and created targeted social media campaigns. We were now regularly communicating with a community of 50,000 plus people. It was fascinating. Politicians were working with us and mentioning how aware they were of our work. International celebrities were engaging in our campaigns. You know, those big names, the household names. <laughs> Can you imagine just how exciting that was for us? But it wasn't enough. The strategy course made me think about the long-term plan. Our university days were ending. Some of us would inevitably move away. It would be heartbreaking if all the good we started would fade away. We created Social enterprise training for youth in at-risk communities to solve that problem. Now, all these youth use the lessons we learned to create their own projects. You know, the ones we just spoke about. <laughs> One girl from the program started a project where she helped new Canadians sell their ethnic foods and funds would go to help resettlement efforts for refugees. Hmm. <sighs> what a journey. <laughs> we went from 13 years old, learning to network. Then our Yoda, lifting us up through mentorship. Then sourcing funding. Then identifying needs. <laughs> then turning anyone who would listen into a partner. Then using marketing to magnify our impact. And finally thinking about the long term. I still remember the look in the Youth Heroes team's eyes when we sourced our first round of big funding. Jaws were on the ground. Fists were pumping in the air. The impact we could now make amplified. Can you imagine just how exciting that would feel. Would you like to embark on a similar journey? This would only take a moment. Here's a fun exercise to get you started. <laughs> Turn to the person to your left and say hello. Now, you guessed it. <laughs> Turn to the person to your right and say hello. All these people around you are your network. Just like my Yoda challenged me, now I challenge you. 
Gather all these people together and spark change in your community, your school, your province, your city, and the world. 